Hello and welcome to Spotlight. This is Art Cortonell reading Don Pierce's Bible Prophecy in today's World News. This is part 9 in our series. There are some interesting scriptural passages which speak of Israel making alliances, which prove to be disastrous for her in these latter days. Instead of trusting in the God of Israel to defend them for their many foes, they are trusting in their own strength, in the weapons that they have designed, and in alliances they have forged with other nations. A passage in Isaiah chapter 10 is quite clear. They are going to trust in a nation that will turn round and stab them in the back. Isaiah's words are directed to Israel and concern the Assyrian power which was the strong power in his day. The Assyrians had taken the ten tribes of Israel captive and had threatened Judah in the days of good king Hezekiah, but had been prevented by God's protective hand from conquering Jerusalem at that time. Isaiah speaks of matters relevant to his day, but then adds, under divine inspiration, these words, which still lie in the future. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though my people Israel be a sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption degreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of all the land. Isaiah 10, verse 20 to 23. The word stay has the idea of trusting in, or leaning upon for support. Isaiah says that there is going to be a time when they stay, trust in, the Lord their God. This will happen when the Lord Jesus comes back to save his people in their hour of trouble. Prior to this time, they will be trusting upon him that smote them. Who is to smite the nation of Israel? Other prophets reveal that it will be a confederacy of nations, headed by Gog, Prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal. We believe this to clearly indicate the power of Russia with her many companion powers that will succeed, for a brief time, to destroy Israel as a nation in their time of greatest trial. So, this passage is telling us that prior to this time, the nation of Israel are trusting in alliances that she has made with Russia. Israel will be trusting, leaning on, false friends, who will turn on her to destroy her. This is exactly the picture we get in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 10. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall also come to pass, that at the same time shall things come into thy, Gog's, mind, and thou, Gog, shall think an evil thought. Israel has been warned millennia beforehand not to trust in the power of Russia because she is going to turn from friend to foe. So, can we see such alliances being formed? Russia is certainly trying to be involved in the exploration of Israel's new offshore gas fields. A year ago, President Putin visited Israel to discuss amongst other things, how Russia's expertise in gas field development could be used by Israel. Russia's first bid to join the consortium developing the Leviathan gas field was eventually rejected in favour of the Australian firm Woodside Petroleum. However, a few months later, Gazprom, the mighty Russian gas company under the direct control of Mr. Putin made a successful bid to handle the gas ex exports from the Tamar field under the headline of When it comes to diplomacy, the Middle East is a bazaar. End of quote. The Al Jumeirah website carried this interesting article on July on June the 24th. Keeping in mind the threat that the Lebanese-based terrorist organisation Hezbollah poses to the future security of offshore Tamar gas fields, located in Israel's territorial waters facing Lebanon, a crazy theory comes to mind. 
What if, after all, Russian interest in Syria, including the preservation of its Mediterranean naval base in Tartus, have finally aligned with Israel's interests? What if secret discussions between Netanyahu and Putin during the Prime Minister's visit a few weeks ago included an agreement regarding the protection of the Russian share and the exploration of Israeli gas? Perhaps Moscow's interest would be influence on the, inf on the region's geopolitical future is a lot more complicated now than it first appeared on the surface. The gas deal worth $60 billion for Gazprom over the next 20 years involves a sum of money that even Russia cannot ignore and in the end Syria may only be a small part of this entire dynamic. In the Middle East nothing is as simple as it appears. End of quote. We should expect to see increasing cooperation between Israel and Russia. This is not so surprising as one-sixth of the Israelites living in Israel are of Russian origin. In our next spotlight we will look at another scripture passage that speaks of the wrong alliances that Israel is making. Israel, beware of the friends you are making. They will turn out to be false friends. Join us again next time for part 10 in our series when we consider further how Bible prophecy is being fulfilled by World News Today.